Erythropoietin, Wikipedia Audio 1 BUY, 1 CN4, 1 ER NM000799 NM00742 NM0013128754 Pharmacology NP000790 NP0012998004 NP031968 Extracellular fluid Erythropoietin also known as hematopoietin or hemopoietin, is a glycoprotein cytokine secreted by the kidney in response to cellular hypoxia, it stimulates red blood cell production in the bone marrow. Low levels of EPO are constantly secreted sufficient to compensate for normal red blood cell turnover. Common causes of cellular hypoxia resulting in elevated levels of EPO include any anemia, and hypoxemia due to chronic lung disease. Erythropoietin is produced by interstitial fibroblasts in the kidney in close association with the peritubular capillary and proximal convoluted tubule. It is also produced in perisinusoidal cells in the liver. Liver production predominates in the fetal and perinatal period, renal production predominates in adulthood. Exogenous erythropoietin, recombinant human erythropoietin is produced by recombinant DNA technology in cell culture and are collectively called erythropoiesis stimulating agents, two examples are epoietin alpha and epoietin beta. ESAs are used in the treatment of anemia in chronic kidney disease, anemia in myelodysplasia, and in anemia from cancer chemotherapy. Risks of therapy include death, myocardial infarction, stroke, venous thromboembolism, and tumor recurrence. Risk increases when EPO treatment raises hemoglobin levels over 11 G/dL to 12 G/dL. This is to be avoided. RHEPO has been used illicitly as a performance enhancing drug. It can often be detected in blood due to slight differences from the endogenous protein, for example, in features of post-translational modification. EPO is highly glycosylated, with half-life in blood around 5H. EPO's half-life may vary between endogenous and various recombinant versions. Additional glycosylation or other alterations of EPO via recombinant technology have led to the increase of EPO's stability in blood. Erythropoietin is an essential hormone for red blood cell production. Without it, definitive erythropoiesis does not take place. Under hypoxic conditions, the kidney will produce and secrete erythropoietin to increase the production of red blood cells by targeting CFUE, proerythroblast, and basophilic erythroblast subsets in the differentiation. Erythropoietin has its primary effect on red blood cell progenitors and precursors by promoting their survival through protecting these cells from apoptosis, or cell death. Erythropoietin is the primary erythropoietic factor that cooperates with various other growth factors involved in the development of erythroid lineage from multipotent progenitors. The burst-forming unit erythroid cells start erythropoietin receptor expression and are sensitive to erythropoietin. Subsequent stage, the colony-forming unit erythroid expresses maximal erythropoietin receptor density and is completely dependent on erythropoietin for further differentiation. Precursors of red cells, the proerythroblasts and basophilic erythroblasts also express erythropoietin receptor and are therefore affected by it. Function 
erythropoietin was reported to have a range of actions beyond stimulation of erythropoiesis including vasoconstriction-dependent hypertension, stimulating angiogenesis, and promoting cell survival via activation of EPO receptors resulting in anti-apoptotic effects on ischemic tissues. However this proposal is controversial with numerous studies showing no effect. It is also inconsistent with the low levels of EPO receptors on those cells. Clinical trials in humans with ischemic heart, neural and renal tissues have not demonstrated the same benefits seen in animals. In addition some research studies have shown its neuroprotective effect on diabetic neuropathy, however these data were not confirmed in clinical trials that have been conducted on the deep peroneal, superficial peroneal, tibial, and sural nerves. Erythropoietin has been shown to exert its effects by binding to the erythropoietin receptor. EPO binds to the erythropoietin receptor on the red cell progenitor surface and activates a JAK2 signaling cascade. This initiates the STAT5, PIK3, and RASMAPK pathways. This results in differentiation, survival, and proliferation of the erythroid cell. SOCS1, SOCS3, and CIS are also expressed which act as negative regulators of the cytokine signal. High-level erythropoietin receptor expression is localized to erythroid progenitor cells. While there are reports that EPO receptors are found in a number of other tissues, such as heart, muscle, kidney, and peripheral-slash-central nervous tissue, those results are confounded by non-specificity of reagents such as anti eper antibodies. In controlled experiments, EPO receptor is not detected in those tissues. In the bloodstream, red cells themselves do not express erythropoietin receptor, so cannot respond to EPO. However, indirect dependence of red cell longevity in the blood on plasma erythropoietin levels has been reported, a process termed neocytolysis. Erythropoietin levels in blood are quite low in the absence of anemia, at around 10 mu/ml. However, in hypoxic stress, EPO production may increase up to 1,000-fold, reaching 10.000 mu/ml of blood. In adults, EPO is synthesized mainly by interstitial cells in the peritubular capillary bed of the renal cortex with additional amounts being produced in the liver, and the pericytes in the brain. Regulation is believed to rely on a feedback mechanism measuring blood oxygenation and iron availability. Constitutively synthesized transcription factors for EPO, known as hypoxia-inducible factors, are hydroxylated and proteosomally digested in the presence of oxygen and iron. During normoxia GATA2 inhibits the promoter region for EPO. GATA2 levels decrease during hypoxia and allow the promotion of EPO production. Erythropoietins available for use as therapeutic agents are produced by recombinant DNA technology in cell culture, and include epigen slash procrit and arrhensp. They are used in treating anemia resulting from chronic kidney disease, chemotherapy-induced anemia in patients with cancer, inflammatory bowel disease and myelodysplasia from the treatment of cancer. The package inserts include boxed warnings of increased risk of death, myocardial infarction, stroke, venous thromboembolism, and tumor recurrence particularly when used to increase the hemoglobin levels to more than 11 G-DL to 12 G-DL. In 1905, Paul Carnot proposed the idea that a hormone regulates the production of red blood cells. After conducting experiments on rabbits subject to bloodletting, Carnot and his graduate student Clotilde Camille de Flandre attributed an increase in red blood cells in rabbit subjects to a hematropic factor called hemopoietin. 
Eva Bonsdorf and Eva Jalavisto called the hemopoietic substance erythropoietin. K.R. Reisman and Alan J. Ersloff demonstrated that a certain substance, circulated in the blood, is able to stimulate red blood cell production and increase hematocrit. This substance was purified and confirmed as erythropoietin. In 1977, Goldwasser and Cohn purified EPO. Pure EPO allowed the amino acid sequence to be partially identified and the gene to be isolated. Synthetic EPO was first successfully used to correct anemia in 1987. In 1985, Lin ETL isolated the human erythropoietin gene from a genomic phage library and used it to produce EPO. In 1989, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the hormone epigen for use in certain anemias. It is pronounced slash R theta R O P T N slash or slash R theta R O P O T N R I T N slash Red Blood Cell Production Non Hematopoietic Roles EPO has been banned since the early nineteen nineties but a first test was not available until the 2000 Summer Olympics. Before this test was available, no sporters were sanctioned after positive tests, but it happened that they were sanctioned after confessing to having used EPO, for example in the Festina affair, when a car with doping products for the Festina cycling team was found. Mechanism of Action Synthesis and Regulation Medical Uses History Pronunciation The first doping test in cycling was used in the 2001 La Flèche Wallonne. The first rider to test positive in that race was Bo Hamburger, although he was later acquitted because his B sample was not conclusive. A 2007 study showed that EPO has a significant effect on exercise performance, but a 2017 study showed that the effects of EPO administered to amateur cyclists was not distinguishable from a placebo. Body water, intracellular fluid slash cytosol. Usage as doping product. <laughs>